This is a coronavirus, and each coronavirus has a diameter of 100 nanometers. And to give you some ideas about nanoscale, then a single human hair is between 80 and 100,000 nanometers thick. Ten hydrogen atoms put side by side measure out to be one nanometers. A single sheet of paper is around 75,000 nanometers thick, which means you can place 750 coronavirus side by side within the thickness of a sheet of paper. Now, the question is, can the N95 masks shield us against coronavirus? Well, N95 masks are designed to filter out particles that are 0.1 micrometer, and 0.1 micrometer equates to 100 nanometers, which is the diameter of a coronavirus as we discussed earlier. However, coronaviruses spread through droplets, which gives them larger size, and we can divide these droplets into two groups. Small ones, which are less than 5 micrometers, and can evaporate into air and remain suspended for a long period of time. Large ones, which are more than 5 micrometers, these large ones are heavier and drop to the ground, and thus transmitted only over short distances. In conclusion though, these figures prove that N95 masks are actually effective. Now, in terms of mass, each coronavirus weighs 1 femtogram, which is equal to... Are you ready? Okay, 0 0.000000000000001 gram. Now, is there any other way that we can make sense of this number? Well, yes, there is. It is indeed estimated that each infected person with coronavirus carries 1 to 100 billion variants during peak infection, which equates to a total mass of 1 to 100 microgram. And if we contextualize this figure, it amounts to be 100 times less than the mass of a poppy seed. If we extend this even further, and if we gather all COVID-19 variants that are currently present worldwide, it will have an overall mass of maximum 10 kilogram. Now, how could one possibly imagine that one day the world will almost come down to its knees by a 10 kg object without using any heavy weaponry? Anyway, why should we care about these numbers when millions are dying? Well, first, it can give us an estimation about the extent to which our immune system will respond to the virus accordingly. Second, these figures give us information about the limits of detection when it comes to developing a testing method with high specificity and sensitivity. Third, they can tell us at what amount the virus becomes infectious and transmissible. For instance, in terms of HIV, which is the causative agent for AIDS, we know that if an infected person carries 10,000 copies of HIV, which is low and difficult to detect by the current testing methods, then he or she cannot pass the virus on, even, even, and even if they had unprotected sex. This is what is meant by the famous slogan, undetectable equals untransmissible, or U equals U. However, this is only true when those individuals are compliant to their daily medications. Furthermore, knowing this can also help improve the quality of life of those individuals in general. And lastly, these numbers and figures help us develop treatments and vaccines that are of the correct amount or dosage with minimal damage to the surrounding tissues and organs of the body in general when it comes to fighting against infections.